Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. And before I begin reading, I want to share with you the length of the passage. It's not a clear indication of how long I'm going to be. But if I ain't, you've got to leave. First Peter chapter four, verses one through sixteen. First Peter chapter four, verse one through sixteen. The word of God reads: Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime doing the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regards to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give you, they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Mm -hmm. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. As good stewards of the manifold blessing or the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. That in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not think it strange. Concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. If you will turn to your neighbor. And I want you to share with them these words. Neighbor. Oh neighbor. The preacher. The preacher. With the help the of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. We'll preach, preach. From, the from the subject. Don't act, don't act. like you don't know. Like you don't Amen. Know. You may be seated. Amen. Well. I know some of you wondering now, where in the world is he going with this hymn? This hymn. Well, look in chapter 4, and I want to draw your attention to verse number 12. Verse number 12 in the passage. It says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. As some strange thing had happened to you. How many of you know we trip? We lose our cool and we lose our mind when the enemy 
starts doing what he decides to do. But at the same time, we have Peter here sharing with the saints. Don't get all crazy with yourself when stuff like that happens. Because guess what? It's not strange. Matter of fact, it's coming. Because it's coming. As Christians and as believers, really and truthfully, when we look at the text, the suffering here is not because you couldn't pay your life bill. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, man. It's gonna be, it's, I know it's going to be quiet in here. Man. The suffering here is not because the folk keep calling your phone for their money. The suffering here is not because somebody actually said something about you that you actually did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The suffering here is not just because you had a conflict with somebody and you feel as though you was, you know, you know, kind of treated or mistreated in a way that you shouldn't have been treated. This suffering here is for the cause of Christ. Now, preacher, you're going to help me with this and don't act like you don't know. Well, I'm talking to those who when you know you're doing God's business and you know you're doing His work, you trip when folks start doing what they do. The Bible said, don't act like it's strange. Then guess what? Expect it to happen. Now here's the thing we got to understand as Christians. If we do an evaluation and we look back at all the things we might have been through, or all the times we thought were hard times and suffering and all this other stuff, how many of us can say, that we have suffered for the cause of Christ. That's the million dollar question. Because how many of you understand and know that when the Bible talks about the suffering here and the suffering throughout the Bible and the suffering of the saints, it's not merely talking about the stresses you go through in your everyday life. It's talking about when you stand up for Jesus and folk condemn you, talk about you, and knock you down. That kind of suffering. Well, preacher, help me out with this. You see, persecution is when you are getting mistreated or somebody says something to you negatively because you stood up for a particular cause. That's persecution. See, many church folk and many folk that may call themselves Christian use that word persecution out of context. Just because somebody talking about you don't mean it's persecution. If you midnight rambling and some folk, somebody says something about you and expose you for what you did, that ain't persecution, that's just exposure. If somebody say something that you did when they saw you doing what you was doing and you know you was up to no good and they tell somebody about it, I don't care if they kind of twist it and they make it out to be a little bit of lie, there's a whole lot of truth to it and you know there's a lot of truth to it, that's not persecution. You just didn't expose. Persecution is when you stand up for God and you get evil spoken of. When you stand up for God. And folk try everything they can. To stop you from doing what God called you to do. That's the suffering what we're talking about right here. Well preacher what they got to do with my day to day. Because our lives ought to be so consumed with the purpose of the cross. That we ought not have time to stress over that living stuff we cry over every day. Because our hearts ought to be to please God. How many of you know many times we cry and snot and whimper over consequences? Not that things happen because they just happen. Some stuff that happened to us is because we know we was doing no good. The money funny and the train change is strange. And yeah, you spent all your time, yeah, at Abdallah's and at all the stores and in the mall, and at the end of the month you're crying because you ain't got enough to pay your bills. Quit talking about something. 
work. You want to have some money at the end of the month? Put in some work. Bible says a man don't work. It's unique. Jesus have mercy. Well, preacher, you just don't know. I only got a little bit, but I'll tell you one thing. God said that all you got to do is trust Him and see. When you got to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, you won't have room enough to receive. That's his word. Oh, yeah. But when we look at suffering, we look at persecution here in the text. Persecution here deals with when you get mistreated for the cause of Christ. I saw a movie over the weekend. The name of the movie, some of you may have seen it. It's my first time seeing it. And I'm here to tell you, it's one of those movies where I, I want to check this out. You know, I just want to see what this movie is all about. I never heard about it. It never was in the news. It was one of those, you know, those movies to where people make them, but really they don't make the theater. But they're good quality family movies, but you never see them out, you know, out and about. Why? Because you got all the negative stuff at the top of the headlines, and anything that's worth something, you ain't going to hear about it. Well, it was one of those movies. And the name of the movie was, Do You Believe? And I checked it out. And there was an incident that happened in the movie that blessed my life. There was a paramedic who had gotten saved maybe two, three years prior. And on the job, he had a tendency of sharing his faith. Now, he wasn't forceful. He wasn't going to try to throw his faith on anybody. He didn't make anybody feel uncomfortable because they said they were Christian. He just shared his faith when the Holy Spirit would, would tell him to do so or when he had opportunity. Well, there was this particular incident where he was on site. And there was a guy trapped under a huge metal drum. And the guy's legs were crushed. And if they would have gotten him out of there, he probably would have been paralyzed or never would have used his legs ever again. The paramedic in his mind and his heart knew that the guy would not make it. He knew the guy was going to die. He was watching, literally watching the guy die in front of him. And he asked him these words. Do you believe? God said, do you believe? Now it must have threw him off because he died. Do you believe? He said, do you believe? Do you believe in Christ? Do you believe he died for you? Do you believe that he forgave you? Do you believe that he's the son of God? Do you believe? He said, do you believe? Pray to God and ask him to forgive you of your sins and accept Jesus Christ into your life. But God prayed the prayer and prayed to God. And the God sent me Christ in his dying hour. And he passed away. As all of this was going on, his wife was running on the scene. They stopped the wife because they told the wife, ma'am, the situation is too dangerous. Stay back. Lo and behold, as the story unfolded, the guy got a visit. The paramedic got a visit from someone who said, that you're being sued for pushing your faith on other people. Ooh, that's not the truth, Paul. When he went to court, the lawyer, the other lady that was going to try the case and go against him, the prosecutor, that's it, she came to him, she said, hmm, you sure you want to go through with this? You know you can lose everything you have. The department won't support you because it's a touch issue. The union won't support you because they don't want to get involved. You sure you want to go through with this? He said, I have to go through with it. At the end of the case, they showed the scene where she was walking out of court. He was snapping his pen as if he was in despair. And she told him as she walked out of the courtroom, I told you. That's not the trip point. He got home. And his wife literally treated him like he had done something wrong. What blessed me so much and what really carried over the message, the same prosecutor was involved in an accident. Guess who had to say, do I come to her rescue? And she asked 
asking the million dollar question, why did you do it? I had to do it. Where am I going with this? As Christians, we've got to be willing, ready, and able to stand up for God, even if it causes us to lose everything we have. That's suffering. That's suffering. But how many of you know that what ends up happening, Lord have mercy, thank you, Holy Spirit, what ends up happening over and over and over and over and over again, we come to church, we come to Bible study, we do ministry, because it's a routine. But how many of us can say that we've suffered for Christ? Everybody wants to be saved. Nobody wants to feel any kind of hurt. Nobody wants to suffer for anything. And if anything seems a little bit, you know, contradictory and controversial, let's stay out of that. I'm going to keep this to myself. I, 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 I'm through with that. But Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, when we do what we do, the question is, do we do it out of formality, out of routine, out of ritual, or we do it because we are ready, willing, and able to suffer for Christ? Hmm. Where are you going with this, Master? So glad you asked. There are people who decide whether or not they're going to church and do ministry predicated on whether they like the folk who won't show them. That's people who do ministry and decide to or not to do ministry based on who's giving orders and direction. <coughs> There are those who do what they do and say they're doing it because they love God. But if the wrong person is there, or watch it now, if somebody that they know is not there, they don't participate. Do we really know what suffering for Christ really is? See, Christ gave us an example and let us know in this life we shall have tribulation. We're going to have some struggle, we're going to have some trouble, but how many of you know the greatest honor in the world is to suffer for your faith? How many of us are sharing the word to the point to where we're suffering for our faith? How many of us are sharing the gospel message so much to where we've gotten our feelings hurt? within the last recent moments in our lives. How many of us have experienced rejection because we said that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation? That's persecution. That's suffering. But what ends up happening Sunday after Sunday, week after week, and I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. So don't leave here with the wrong message. People get up to this pulpit. People get up behind the podium. And stand before congregation worldwide. You're the head and not the tail. You ain't supposed to go through nothing. You ain't supposed to be seen. And here it is. The Bible is telling us that suffering for Christ is honorable. Either they tore it out or they skipped over it. Our lives should be filled with feeling rejected because of our faith. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, all your sins. What? All your sins. All. 
the same mind. That means have your heart and your mind ready to get rejected for your faith and mistreated for what you stand for. Oh, Jesus. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Watch it now. If you spend your time doing God's work and doing His will, you ain't going to have enough time to worry about that other stuff. But when it comes to doing ministry, when it comes to the church, when it comes to standing up for God, it's on the back burner. I watched the game last night, LSU versus Alabama, and it blew my mind to tell me how many four was in the state. A hundred and two thousand. I wish we had a hundred and two folk in here right now. Folk miss when they want to miss. They go out of town when they want to go out of town. I don't know where they at. Nobody know where they at. Well, you ain't seen this one lately. No, I ain't seen them. You heard from them lately. No. And then a month later, they show up. Hey, how you doing? And like they never left. St. <laughs> Mary, I'm not saying this for no other reason because just because it's the truth. This church ought to be full every single Sunday. Folk ought to be trying to tear the door down to ask, what can I do to serve God? I want to share this with you. If I don't ever share anything else. Ministry ain't about the pastor. Ministry ain't about who's over it. Ministry is not about whether you like how it's being run. Ministry is serving others. <clears throat> and ministry is tough because ministry will put you in a position where when you do what you're doing you're tempted to stop doing what you're doing why? because of persecution because of suffering and because of experience and rejection just because you stood up for the cause of Christ. We've got to understand people of God when we look at it. Folk will go out outside of a stadium and tailgate for a whole day. Now you know what that is? That ain't nothing but worship. Because they're getting their hearts and minds ready to support their team. And how is it worship, Pastor? They got the purple and gold socks. They got the purple and gold jacket. They got the purple and gold hat. And let somebody from the opposing team tell them something. Yeah, they're going to use some words that you ain't going to find in Webster. That's worship. But let somebody talk about God. I ain't getting involved in that. I ain't got the time for that. Let them be what they go. They're going to just die and go to here. I don't care. It's up to them. <laughs> when it comes to the kingdom of God, we backtrack. We don't want to feel rejected. We don't want to suffer nothing. But when it comes to our favorite ball team, I'm going to tell you, we know the roster, the whole defensive roster, the whole offensive roster. We know who's been the coach for that era, and we know the coaches from when the game began. But when it comes to the cause of Christ, clueless. How many of you know that when we look at Christianity, it should never ever be anything that's fanatic? But it ought to be something that you're committed to. See, you should not be here because your mama or your daddy was a part of this church. Mm -mm, wrong reason. Wrong reason. You ought to be here because you know this is where the Holy Spirit got you. And this is where God wants you to grow. I grew up in this church. But I promise you, I didn't come here because I felt as though I had an advantage. Matter of fact, I was at a disadvantage. Because I, I got a pastor for that watched me grow up. Jesus. 
If you ain't know nothing about it, I don't wish that on nobody. Because it ain't easy. I shared with Brother Lee this morning, Brother, you know, like sometimes you wonder, you know, Brother, you know, you ask yourself, am I being unreasonable? Are you asking too much? You know, that, then you gotta stop and think. How you being unreasonable and you asking folk to do what they say they're going to do or what they say they've been calling to do? When we look at <coughs> suffering in the Bible, it refers to doing God's work and getting mistreated because you've done it. But the Bible says, don't you dare get Tripped up with yourself, crazy and out your mind, because don't think it's strange. It's going to happen. Amen. I want to challenge St. Mary today. Pastor can't do it all. I don't care how many times you get rejected. I don't care how many times folks talk about you. I don't, I don't care how many times folks call you holy than thou. I don't care how many times folks say you think you're better than me. Share the cross wherever you go. Amen. Yeah, I see, and, and let me tell you something. We're social beings. And you know what we'll do? We'll put friendships above sharing the cross. Amen. And so we don't lose this friend. We ain't going to touch that religious thing. I'm not going to touch that. They go where they go, I go where they go. So you know what? I'm not going to touch that issue. But at the same time, God has commissioned you to speak up for truth. Amen. And if it causes someone to sever ties with you because of your faith, don't get crazy with yourself. Because the Bible said, don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Amen. You shouldn't be connected to folk and fellowshipping with folk. Just for the sake of fellowship, it ought to be for the cause of Christ. Or to win that soul. So when we talk about suffering in the text, it gave us a clear indication of what suffering really, really is. Now, now I want to I share it with you. And I promise you I won't keep you much longer. When you go to verse 3, I want to prepare y'all for this. Because it's coming. It says, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime doing the will of the Gentiles. You know what that means? You spent enough time doing the wrong thing. You have had your fun. And I'm saying fun as it relates to that which is ungodly. You have spent enough time, look what it says, that we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. And the Gentiles will consider those who are ungodly, rude, and all unruly. But look what it says. When we walked, watch now, in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and a bottom of idolatry. You have spent enough time partying. Now it's time to get it together. Quit worrying about who's here, who's not here. Quit worrying about this, that, and the other, and all that other stuff. Quit worrying about the prosperity of the wicked, because you better understand that they have an end, and it ain't too good. You just spend enough time, guess what? Like the, like, like the old title or something, do it you. <laughs> I'm going to do me, and you do you. Yeah. Don't think Pastor forgot how to do it. I just don't do it no more. And I ain't like some folk who can't do it no more. Jesus. Hello. <laughs> can still do it. But I choose not to. Not because I'm all mad. But because I'm crazy enough to be committed to the cross. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit. 
Look what it said in verse 4. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do. Well, oh, Lord, have it. They think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They looking at you and remember when they used to run with you. Mm -hmm. They remember some of the conversation that you had. They remember some of the places that you gone. They, they remember some of the low down and no good stuff and plans and plots you've done together. And now they're looking at you. Hmm, who she thinks she is now? Then got a little legend and she thinks she all that. And what do they do? Speak evil of you. That's suffering. When you change your life for the better, when you change your life and made a transformation for the cause of Christ, and the same knucklehead friends you used to run with talking about you. That's suffering. That's persecution. But you've got to understand this one thing. To get persecuted for Christ is honorable. And it goes above and beyond any kind of work you can do. Why? Because it shows that you're steadfast and unmovable. And that your faith is not predicated on your feelings, but your faith is predicated on the Father. Oh, I have mercy. Look what it says. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Don't you worry about them. They're going to give an account to God. may not be right now. They might be living lavish right now. They might be going fair and well right now. You're looking at them, man. Shoot, I'm up here trying to do it right. Look at them right now. They're living all jacked up and messed up. I'm over here struggling. Thing you know, getting all spiffed up, you know what I'm saying? Got your shoes shine, got your stuff laid out, and you go right back to the same stuff God delivered you from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you done lost ground. And now, after you get over yourself, and the Spirit of the Lord finished beating up on your behind, now you're back the way you once were, and now, guess what? The enemy going to come right back. Once more and again to knock you down once more. That's why you gotta understand. It's kind of like being in war, y'all. When you sign up, don't ever go in war. It was better to you to have never put your hand in that plow than to go to that plow and say, I'm with this, and turn around. Where you going with this, Pastor? Well, see, we preach a loving God and a, a God who loves you and who will forgive you. These, all of that. But you better make sure you make the story complete. Jesus told individuals who wanted to come to Christ. He said, count up the cost. Are you ready for the suffering that comes along with what it is you signed up for? Are you ready to deal with folk talking about you when you ain't done nothing wrong? Are you ready for that suffering? See, that's like the two disciples that got their mind to go up there and talk to Jesus for them. Yeah, yeah. Because they want to reserve seats in the in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Y'all remember them? Yeah, y'all remember them too. And Jesus says the greatest amongst you will serve. The greatest amongst you will serve. See, they're worried about position, status, where they're going to sit, all this other stuff. You say, y'all got it twisted, man. Put in some work. Get over yourself. Because it really ain't about nothing about you. It's all about doing the work of the ministry. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, we ought to be able to say in our heart that what I have done on behalf of Jesus Christ was done because I love him. For no other reason. Any other reason is not a good reason. 
come what may, I'm willing to take the bitter with the sweet. Persecution. Suffering. Go to, uh, we'll go to the end. We'll go to the end. Verse 14. Verse 14. Lord have mercy. So if you all reproach, that means talking about your reproach. That means spoken evil of, reproached, reviled, or, 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 or insulted. For the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. How do you know someone who's in the spirit and the spirit of God is resting upon them? They're able to stand up even when persecution comes. On their part, he is blasphemed. That's the ones who's talking about you. Because they're saying that what you're doing ain't worth doing and God ain't really who he is. They're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. But watch it now. But on your part, he is glorified. But pastor, I don't like hurt. I don't like rejection. I don't like when people don't like me. Jesus didn't like you either. But he serves as our example for handling persecution. Jesus, help me. Let none of you, watch it now, suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody in other people's matter. You know what he's saying? He said, don't be guilty of doing the wrong thing and then come say now you're suffering. Because you got to go through what you got to go through. Don't suffer as a murderer or a thief or somebody who's doing the wrong thing. But look what he says. Yet if anyone suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God in this matter. It is an honor to suffer for Christ. And suffering for Christ is not a reason to quit. It's all the reason to give him praise. Amen. Because I'm here to tell you we're living in a world right now where our faith will be challenged. If you got any kind of confidence or boldness in the cross, you better get ready. See, the laws of the land are proving that to us. Why? Because you got to understand, the enemy going to do what he going to do. The world going to do what they going to do. But Christians, you got to have enough backbone to stand on what you say you believe. You can't ride on mama faith. You can't ride on daddy faith. You can't ride on mama faith. You can't ride on papa faith. You got to go for yourself. Because my mom, pa, mama, dad, brother, sister can decide to go left any time they want. But guess who got to give an account? You. Suffering for the cause of Christ. But I'm talking about those who have suffered for Christ. Not from consequences. Not for everyday crisis. Not because they didn't pan out exactly like you wanted them to pan out. Because we'll, we'll catch a hissy fit when we lose our keys. I know it's comical, but it's the truth. I talk about, oh, what you had a bad day today. Because you lost your keys. Okay. Yeah. But you got Christians in other countries losing their life because they say they're Christians. Losing them keys ain't going to be worth much at the end of the day. <laughs> we'll trip out and fall out because folk ain't spoke to us. Ooh, I just can't stand it. Ooh, I just, I just mess my day up. But you got folk being executed for saying they're Christians. If anything, you 
should have initiated and said, how do you do? Too bad, bad day. That ain't suffering. You cussing for God and this, that, and the other because somebody cut it from you. You ready to track them down, run them down, and give them a piece of your mind. Ooh, they just messed up my day. But you got four them been beheaded for their faith in Jesus Christ. Ooh, they might have saved you from a wreck up the road. Chill out. Where you going with this, Pastor? Suffering. Persecution. From God's perspective. How many of you know that many of the things that we trip over and we go through and we talk about and we let wreck our day ain't worth the hill of being? Because I'm here to tell you, at the end of the day, the cause of Christ is way more important. And that little stuff you tripping over, that's going to pass. But God's ministry, God's work, His word will remain forever. For the cause of Christ, I want to challenge you today. Don't do it because I'm telling you. Do it because the Spirit of God is leading. But I know him within his word because he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Wow. Baptizing them in the name of what? Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're supposed to be talking about Christ. Mm -hmm. And say, go out to all nations. Guess what? Preaching the gospel. We're supposed to be talking up for God. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it with asking the question. How many of you within the last week I ain't saying you say, oh, God won't make a way. No, 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 no. Have shared the cross with somebody mm -hmm. by a show of hand. Amen. Mm -hmm. But how many of you know that's what we ought to be about? How many of you can say within the last month somebody that talked about you and say, yeah, look at you, Miss Goody Two Shoes, or look at you, bro, man, you think you all that. Now that you got, you know, few you got saved, you have been talked about within the last month. I say even the last year. Mm -hmm. Because of your conversion and because of your faith. Raise your hand. That's persecution. But check out what happens. And we mess up. When we out there doing what we're doing, and we rambling and running and drinking and smoking, yeah, and doing all that stuff, and folks say, yeah, and you call yourself a Christian, you deserve it. You deserve it. Why should an unbeliever Hold us to a higher standard than we hold ourselves to. Our own standards ought to be higher than what the world expects of us. That's persecution. When guess what? You're doing what God called you to do. And for it. Got something to say. When your good is evil, what? Spoken of. That's persecution. That's suffering. The next time you start to complain, I want you to weigh that thing out. I want you, I want you to weigh it out to see if it's worth the stress, the time, the worry, and the grumbling you're going to put into it. And I want you to think about what Christ did for you. And see if it match up to what you're tripping over. I can almost bet 99.9% .9 of the time it will not. It will not. So when we look at our lives, we got to understand what true suffering, true persecution is. It's being mistreated for the cause of Christ. And being talked about because you're doing the will of God. That's persecution. That's suffering. 
And that little stuff we trip over, really and truthfully, don't match up to what Christ had to go through for us. Can you imagine? Being in the garden knowing you're about to die. But at the same time, not that you're just about to die. You're about to die for the sins of folk that committed the sin. They really deserve it. But really and truthfully, you taking the lick for them. That's suffering. And then, Lord, please remove this cup. But at the same time, nevertheless, not all we not will be done. That's turmoil. That's anguish. And at the same time, going in front of each of these courts and councils, and these men are talking to you like you've done something wrong. And you got one of the leaders, he know you ain't done nothing. But he's so scared. He don't want to side with the right thing. He told the people, whoever y'all choose. And you know you ain't done nothing wrong, and you got an old crazy Barabbas. You know it, he ain't nothing but an old thief, old crook. He go free, and you get it. Incarcerated. That's suffering. Then it come down to it. You know you haven't done nothing wrong. And you're walking. And you know every step you take, take is closer and closer and closer and closer to your death. That's suffering. And when you get to where you're going, along the way, they put a robe on you. And they put a crown of thorns on your head. Not because you treat <coughs> like royalty. To mock you. Because you said you was king of the Jews. And they mock you. And they talk about you. Ha ha ha. He he he. The king of the Jews. Knowing in your heart that's who you are. But still. Get mocked and laughed at. Ridiculed and talked about. That's suffering. Crown of thorns on your head, the more you move, the worse the pain gets. But yet at the same time, you know your cause, you know your purpose, you know why you're doing what you're doing. So guess what? I'm going to take the pain because I've got little old Oscar Walker on my mind. Mm -hmm. That's suffering. And you go, and they make this thing for you, and they lay you on it. Now, really and truthfully, what we see on pictures is not really a true depiction of what a crucifixion is. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, it wasn't his hands. They nailed him kind of in his wrist. So that it would hold him up in his wrist. So that it would hold him up. His feet had a little bit of stool on it. They didn't want him to fall off in his flesh to tear. So they kept him up. They put a little stool under his feet. But at the same time, they still nailed his feet. And he hung there. Besides, not two innocent men. Besides two individuals who had done wrong. Amen. And he stayed there. One of them acknowledged. Mm. If you, who you say you are, then save us. But then you got one. I believe you are who you are. He said, this thing you shall be with me in paradise. Mm. Oh, yeah. oh, but to Hang there, knowing you had done nothing wrong. That's persecution. That's suffering. Yes, sir. And he stayed there in anguish, and he died there. And right before he gave up the ghost, he said, Father, if I am, I commend my 
us. He breathed his last. That's suffering. Dying for folk who could care less if you live. I'm so glad. That's not the end of the story. That three days later, he proved to the world and all those who had taken his life that I am who I say I am. And one day, you still won't have to answer to me. And he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. Jesus gave us an example of what true suffering is. And what true persecution really is. And many of us, I'm telling you right now, have never ever hit the tip of the iceberg of what suffering is. Now, I don't want to demean anything you're going through in your life. Because there's some people who have gone through some things in their lives that if I had to go through it, I might not have handled it as well. I understand that. But even in the midst of whatever you went through, God has given you an example through Jesus Christ as to how to handle it. Giving glory to God. So when things come your way, when you talked about because of your faith, when people come at you for no unforeseen reason because you stood up for what is right, don't act like you didn't know. Don't think it's something strange. Understand, Lord have mercy, it comes with the territory. Stand on the promises of God. Oh yes. And let God do. He knows how to do. Oh, yes. And that oh, is yes. take care of you. Amen. Amen. And God bless each and every one of you.